So in July 2022, Zach, Rebecca, and I took a trip to the North Fork of the Koyukuk River, which is in Gates of the Arctic National Park, way up in the Brooks Range of Northern Alaska. The plan was to spend about two weeks out there backpacking and pack wrapping 100 miles down the river all the way to Bettles. Animal signs were just everywhere. We saw grizzly and moose tracks almost everywhere there was soft ground. We found one spot north of the landing site where grizzly and wolf tracks zigzagged all around the banks of the river. And we also found a whole bunch of antler sheds from moose, bighorn sheep, and caribou. Zach seemed to have a knack for finding these antler sheds. Just the Annabelle East, so I never had cause to look back. But just set the course north and I'd study the charts and towards dawn I drifted towards sleep. In a dream of a mine, deep harbor I'd find past the ice for my Annabelle East. The thought that I told her. Soon it got quiet, it was never quiet day, quiet night. Sea turned the color, sky turned the color, sea turned the color of ice. Till the last all around us was fast as one vast glassy desert of arsenic white. And I please on one shifted, I shifted instead in the drifts against Annabelle's side, and the crew gathered closer. All right, we've come four miles. Uh, or no, we've come, let's <laughs> <laughs> back that up. We've come four hours, <laughs> we've gone one mile, and we were gonna go along the side of that mountain and then decided that was gonna kill us, so we didn't do that. We started way down there at the river. That's, uh, which, which one is that? Frigid, Frigid Peak. Yeah. Trying to work our way up. Right now, I'm suffering from heat exhaustion. Rebecca's got some foot problems. Zach's one foot has fallen off. But we're going. We're brave. <laughs> or stupid. Yeah. <laughs> we're both.
excited. We're about to hop on the North Fork of the Kyuk Yuk and head down to Red Star Creek. And then we'll set up camp. It's our first time on the river. It was super muddy and probably a foot or two higher yesterday. We saw a grizzly bear right there yesterday. Walking down that bank, as soon as he saw us, he reared up and looked at us closer and then took off. Never saw him again. First, first grizzly bear, what do yeah, you think? Yeah, first grizzly bear. It was really cool. Yeah. I'm just glad he wasn't on our side of the river. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. This is where we landed, by the way. This is literally the landing strip where they landed us. <laughs> we were afraid they'd try to land again while we had all, we were all spread out. We'd have to get out of the way. Now we're headed down river, North Fork of the Koyuk. Koyuk? Koyuk. I, I, <laughs> I can't get the syllables right. Zach? Koyuk? Koyuk. There it is. Koyuk. <laughs> Glad I can help the, uh, the English major with his. <laughs> Koyuk. <laughs> We're headed through the class two rapids at Cladonia Creek. Rebecca's already run them, didn't have any trouble. Hanging River right. These rapids are just downstream of Cladonia. Literally just a few yards downstream of Cladonia. The biggest problem is there's a big boulder right in the middle and a big rock fall on the left. So we're trying to stay river right. As you can see by me spinning in circles. We've already scouted it. Rebecca and Mark, whom we met down at our camp yesterday, are down here at the takeout, or at the eddy. Rebecca made it look easy, so let's see how we do.
Not a problem. All right, we're on day six. We just left camp where we stayed for two nights. And now we're headed down. We camped at the Clear River Confluence. Now we're headed down to Tinia Gook to see what it looks like. Tinia Gook, I don't know how you pronounce it. There you see my partners, Zach and Rebecca. Tenegook, Tenegook Valley. It's beautiful. It's a eroded mountain right there. We camped to the base of that yesterday, the day before. Yeah, that valley looks huge. This looks beautiful. Alright, so we're on the north fork of the Koyakuk, and that's the Tinia Gook coming in. Really pretty right here. Wind, pouring rain, been this way for two days. Can't ask for anything better. Yeah. Why is it what? <laughs> Thought we'd never see the sun again. Rained on us for like two days straight. Nasty headwind today. Driving rain. It was pretty miserable. The sun finally came back out. We missed a lot of views of a bunch of mountains. I think now we're mostly getting out of the mountains. We have about 35 miles to go back into battles. Um, but one of the good things about the rain today was seeing all the lichen just kind of explode on the sides of the mountains. Just this bright yellow gold color. 
So it was really, really pretty. So now, let's see, it's getting pretty flat. And there's mountains back there. And luckily the sun's coming out. I can feel my toes again. Well, this is where I had my first flip. I hit a log. It's about right there. Flipped me over. And then I stayed with the boat and the paddle until I hit that tree about right there. That jammed me up and tried really hard to drown me. I managed to get out of that. But the boat and the paddle got hung up in the tree. And luckily after I got out of the water, trying to figure out how we were going to get the boat and the paddle out, they just dislodged on their own. And, and uh, Zach and Rebecca were able to paddle out and catch them, bring them in. No problem. But it just kind of stinks. I had my first swim, but... Uh, Go look at that log a little closer. Rapid, as you can see, carried me straight into that log, which I didn't see until it was too late. And it was pulling me into it. And I hit it sideways and it flipped me. And really what I should have done was, in hindsight, I should have just turned into it and hit it straight on. It probably would have spun me around. Now, I'm not sure how much better that would have been, because as you can see, then there's a strainer right here over the top. Well, when, the, when my boat flipped, here I was able to uh, grab the paddle and grab the boat really quickly and then I hit this tree and it grabbed hold we had a bear vault bear canister strapped to the uh, stern of my boat and it caught up in that tree and it pulled me underneath and I was underneath the boat and I, then under the water and I realized the boat wasn't moving and so I ducked down uh, to get out from under it and popped out. We didn't lose, I didn't lose any gear. And it got wet, it wasn't supposed to get wet. And all's well that ends well. So good times. First swim, right there. <laughs> right there, we're about 35 miles up river from Bettles. That's where it happened. Look at this beautiful view we have now. We hadn't been able to see mountains in two days. But back up through there is what we paddled through at least for the past day or so. I've been on the river for about 70 miles now, I think. It's unbelievable. Got our first moose sighting of the trip. There's a cow moose and two babies. Just came out of the woods right behind us freaked out as soon as she saw us. Go on babies. Go to mama. There you go. All right, you've never seen somebody so gross. It's uh, day 12, it's the morning of, and I haven't had a shower in 12 days. And I am gross and uh, stink and everything else, and it's been a hard trip. Last night, the at about two in the morning, this horrible, heavy driving rain came in with at least 50 mile an hour gust wind that just one big, huge gust came in. I cannot believe that our tent stood because uh, it was a crazy gust of wind. Uh, but they did, they stood, we made it. We lived to tell about it, but the Arctic sending us out the way the Arctic wants to send us out. This is the last day, uh, we're getting ready. You can see the boats, getting ready to hit the river. And we have seven miles to go to Bettles and that's the end of the trip. Uh, it's Thursday, so we're actually coming out a day early. Um, but uh, thank goodness, because 
feel like cleaning our gear and getting it ready to get for an airplane is gonna be a huge deal. But here's what I look like, my gosh. After 12 days of not shaving, I think this is the longest I've gone without shaving in my entire life. Um, I will fix that this afternoon. But you can still see, I mean, we're out of the national park now. Um, we're just kind of going down the river, but there's still, this is just still untouched wilderness. It's just beautiful. We camped back behind me up on that gravel bar and just beautiful. There are wolf tracks and moose tracks all over this little peninsula. And yesterday we saw beaver back that way, just maybe not even a quarter mile down the river that way. But that's it. So it's been a phenomenal trip. It's not been the trip that I planned. It's been way off from the trip that I planned, but it's still been a phenomenal trip. So, got to come back to the Brooks Range, that's for sure. All right. We can see the first houses and bettles. Picture's all crooked, but... We've officially seen just one person in 12 days. Been incredible. We've seen as many grizzly bears as we did people. And more moose. Is that a powered canoe? We've been doing it wrong. We should have just strapped you to the back of the boat so you could have gotten <laughs> Farted our way back home. Eight seconds of emergency jet power in this uh, <laughs> It's coming right for us. And we're here. <laughs> Becca almost made it. We're done. What'd you guys think? It was great. It was awesome. <laughs> we lived to tell about it, uh, despite the Arctic trying to kill us every five minutes. Yeah. The, <laughs> the uh, yeah, so that was really cool. As you can see it's still raining and dreary and windy and cold. What's the first thing you want? Mm, food. From? Eric. <laughs> <laughs> or really anybody who will give me delicious anybody food. Anybody who gives me food. Cool, <laughs> awesome trip. And we all live to tell about it. Outstanding. Good job, everybody.